in JavaScript to, to build and compose your UI instead of, of using uh, Objective-C and Swift and, and Java. And it's so much faster than using those native uh, um, technologies because there's no recompiling. You can use a live reload and just hit save and you see directly what, what you, your changes. And you also have hot reload which allows you to, to keep the state of the application and just like uh, um, import some new code and, and see the change directly like keeping you where you were in, inside the, the deep screen hierarchy that, that, you, that you reached. And React Native is also really a performance out of the box because it's really just using native elements behind the scenes. So instead of doing, of using the, 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 the DOM on the, on the browser, it's, it's just doing the, the, using the native elements on iOS and Android. So that's the view, the text, and the scroll, scroll view, the, all the toolbars and all the things that you can uh, use uh, on, the, on the native side. And it, it runs perfectly well at 60 FPS and it's, it's really indistinguishable yeah, from uh, uh, native application built just using uh, iOS, and, I mean Objective-C and Swift. And another interesting part of uh, React Native is you can easily import uh, like all the views, uh, like existing Objective-C uh, or, or, or Java views that, that you can do, um, and, and also like call any uh, API that are available on those platforms, you're like, you're never limited to, to the React and JavaScript uh, API that, that is uh, given to you. And that's, that's, you just follow the steps on, on the website, there, there are some guides, really interesting guides. And the last point is about code sharing. So in general, what I've observed is um, I can like usually share like 95% of the code, so that's really a big, big plus because it's, it's again like so much faster to ship and, to ship feature with, with the React Native, thanks to that. All right, so to learn React Native, I highly recommend you to, to check out the, the React Native website. There's a really good uh, getting started guide, and it's really interactive, and you can, you can easily follow along and, 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 and play with it. And in addition to that, I also recommend having a look at React Native Express, because it just complements and, uh, and built upon what is uh, uh, expressed and, and, and shown in the React Native Getting Started Guide. All right, so now, now we're going to mostly uh, yeah, get into the code. I'm going to show you how to, to, to build your first uh, application. And this is going to be like the rest of the presentation, so about only uh, live coding. All right. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the terminal. So there are multiple ways to, to bootstrap a, a React Native application, but what we're going to use here is a Create React Native App. It's basically the counterpart to Create React App that Bobby was uh, explaining. So you just install it uh, on your computer using M NPM, and, but you need Create... Uh, create Re React Native app, and, but you need Node set up on your computer to be able to do that. So here I'm just going to do it, but it's already, it's already there, so all right. So from there, we just, we're just going to, to call it. Let's, let's create this application. So it's going to fetch everything, all the dependencies from NPM. So it shouldn't take too long, a couple of minutes. Still working. All right, 35 seconds, that's better, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So now let's, um, let's open our project. Okay. I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code because it's, it's a really good editor and and comes prepackaged. I mean, not prepackaged, but it's come. You can install some React Native extensions that makes it really easy to to uh, develop a React Native application. 
And here you see on the right, uh, we have just uh, the, the, new, the file that uh, Create React Native App uh, has uh, already set up and created for us. And the entry point is the app.js file. And here you see you can recognize the, the, the React component, the root React component that it, it has created for us. So now what we want to do is actually start the React Native Packager, but in the correct directory. And the, the Packager is a, a little bit like um, Webpack. It, it bundles uh, your JavaScript into, it creates a React, uh, JavaScript bundles that is usable by the application. And so everything is already set up for you. So ba Babel is being used, and also um, uh, flow type. You can use flow type directly. It's, it's already uh, ready for you to use. And now let's just launch the iOS simulator. You just, yeah, just press I, and it's going to launch it. And we're going to be able to see directly uh, the application running as soon as it's loaded. It's a bit big here. Let's scale that. Okay. It's opening. And you see behind it's bundling the JavaScript. And as soon as that's the, the first time you do it, it's a bit long, but as soon as it's ready, it's just a, uh, when you do some changes, it's, it's in almost instantaneous. Oh, and there you go. You can see the text of the, our application. Let's also start the, the Android simulator. And it's just there. I don't have much space, so I guess for the rest of the talk, I won't show the Android emulator. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to see. Yeah, there's that's correct, yeah. Yeah, you need to install uh, Xcode and Android Studio to either use uh, iOS or Android. And there you go, we have our React Native application running in both emulator. And it works as well on your own device if you want to do it. Um, all right, so let's have a look at, at the code. So here you see, for instance, we can, let's change the background and just hit save. And you see the Android directly reloaded. So for iOS, I guess we just need to enable, yeah, live reload. And now we just, all right, let's say blue. Yeah, okay, it's, it works. But on the Android emulator, sometimes it's a bit slower and it doesn't get uh, notified of the change. So sometimes we have to, to just retry and retry <laughs> and retry. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, I'll just use the, the iOS simulator because this little bug is a bit annoying. Okay, so here you see the render function is um, containing uh, three text uh, text line basically, and and um, so the view element is like uh, the equivalent of of the div element on on the web, and the text element is uh, basically the span element. And yeah, we have a, a bunch of different uh, other components to use. So we're going to view to take a look at the at the at the view component now to see what what we can do with it. So let's let's just remove this and, and introduce a new a new view here. So let's call it box, and we're going to style it. So basically, this is CSS in, G in JS. It's it's a subset of what you can do on the web. Uh, not, not all uh, CSS properties are supported, but a bunch of them are, and it's, it's really convenient. So let's add a background. Color, let's say blue, but we're going to switch back to white for the background. But here you see nothing, of course, because there's no size. Height, 100. All right, here we have our box. Uh, we can apply a border radius 20, a border width, let's say, 10. Um, okay, so that's interesting because here you see the, the, the error box that's that tell us that we, 
we didn't spell uh, something correctly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thanks. And and uh, the um, iOS uh, error message, I mean, a React Native error message are, are quite helpful. Um, so usually you, you can figure out easily what's wrong and just and not uh, waste too much time uh, trying to figure out uh, where the error comes from. And you can also apply an opacity, for instance. And there you go. Um, yeah, that's uh, the, the basic property I can that you can use. So we're going to add a bunch of other boxes here. So to play about, to, to to have a look at the, the how the layout uh, works with the React Native. So let's add some spacing a little bit. So React Native uh, uses Flexbox for for the layout. And it's uh, exactly what, if you already knew no flex, uh, Flexbox on the web, you, you can directly, you, you won't be like uh, lost with, with Flexbox with React Native, it's exactly the same. But the difference is uh, the axes are inverted because uh, the main axis, uh, the main direction is in a column, and on, I believe on the web it's uh, in a row. But that's basically because of mobile applications are, are usually laid out, laid out um, in, a, in a column like this. So here you see uh, the container that we have is uh, configured to, to, um, uh, to lay out the item just in the center, but we can just change this and use flex start, for instance, and then it, in start, it starts to, to, to render from the start. And this is like the main, um, the justified content is for doing the layout uh, on the main axis, which here is the, the vertical axis. So when we say flex start on the vertical axis, it, it puts all the item at the top vertically. And align items, it's for the secondary axis, so the, here the horizontal axis. And so horizontally, they're all centered, but we can move them to the left, for instance, or to the right with flex end. And so if your device is configured uh, left to right or right to left, it's it's gonna yeah uh, uh, respect that and, and change that. And what else can we do? Uh, flex start. Uh, we can can you um, space around, for instance, space around. No, it's not here. Yes, it's on the other axis. So you see, I, I was just trying to change the layout, but I entered something correct. Um, here, for instance, I'm using space, space around, and, and that's uh, what it does. I just like um, splitting them um, uh, with an equal um, a margin between, between them, and space between as well works. All right, yeah, but you don't see much of the difference. Um, all right, what else can I show you? Oh yeah, we, we have the, so if we switch the, the direction and switch to a row like you have on the web, so here we, we have this. And here you see, we, we can only see like four of them, but we can also apply another um, attribute, um, uh, which is uh, just to display them in a grid. But I'm just having a brain freeze. <laughs> How do you display them in a grid? Uh, oh yeah, we have to flex wrap. We have to wrap that. Um, okay, flex wrap. And now we wrap them and we can, yeah, that's how you basically implement a grid with Flexbox. You, you start to wrap the items. So it doesn't have enough space, so the rest of the items uh, continue next on the second line. Let's add more of them. And here you see that all the items are like displayed under like the, the time and the sta basically the status bar at the top. And, and we can easily fix that by using the safe area view component. And this will basically make it so all the items are displayed uh, in the useful um, uh, area content. And this works like on all, um, all, on all devices. Uh, for instance, here it's the iPhone uh, 10. 
but which has a notch, which is more problematic. And for most applications, you need to, to, to take care of that and, and, and account for that. And for instance, if you were using the safe area view on an iPhone 6 or 7 or 8, it would just like make it a little bit, um, um, move the, the items on the top a little bit so they, they, they still appear under the, the status bar. All right. Uh, let's have a look now at the text, text elements. Uh, hi, why is it? Okay. So this is the text element. It's quite simple. Uh, but let's, let's apply some new styles to it. I'm not going to detail all the styles because it's actually a bit boring, but you can read about all of them uh, on the React Native website. So you can also um, apply the style inline um, in, in, in your render function. For instance, let's put the text to green. I'm going, and let's make it bigger, font size. For, let's say, 50. All right, and we, you can also nest uh, text elements and apply different styles to, 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 to that. But as soon as you start nesting them, like the nested element cannot be placed. Um, some, some properties doesn't work, like if you try to, to, you, to apply a transform or um, um, basically all the layout uh, properties are not applied to the nested element because it's a limitation of the, the current system. So let's apply a different color. Uh, let's say uh, red. Oh, and I forgot something. Yeah, I forgot to close it. Okay, reload. All right, and we can make it bold. Font weight, <coughs> bold. Yeah, so that's yeah, how you use uh, the text element, quite simple. If you just, yeah, all the properties are listed on the React Native website. Um, what else can we do? Let's, let's add an image uh, component. So the image component just takes, uh, it, it takes a source property. And here we're going to, to fetch it from the web. Placekitten.com. but we need to import the image element. And we don't actually see anything because we need to apply um, a size, a width and height to the component. And that's different, that's on purpose because uh, the React Native developer decided that it wasn't a good experience to have the layout change as, as the image was loaded. So they require all elements to, all image elements to, to um, to provide the, the width and height. So let's say yeah, 200. OK. And there you go. Quick, a cute little, little kitten. <laughs> All right. Um, we can also apply a tint color, I believe. Let's say uh, blue. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, it 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 works. Um, it works on the style, I guess. It's blue, but completely blue. So, completely blue. So let's just. R -R -G. Let's apply an opacity. Okay, no, fails, doesn't work. So yeah, it, it works if you were using like a transparent PNG. Um, um, all right, so let's have a look at, at another component which is quite useful uh, for mobile application, which is uh, the scroll view. So let's see, scroll view. So we're going to wrap everything inside a scroll view. But yeah, let's add much uh, more elements to this. And many more, all right, a new box. Okay, so here we go. So 
we have the scroll view, so as soon as we want to, to see the, the other elements, we, we can, we can uh, scroll the, the view here. All right, so it's, yeah, there are a bunch of other properties for the scroll view, and you can, you can uh, enable paging if you want. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to have enough time to go over this. Uh, so let's just take this moment to have a look at the Android emulator to see how it looks there. Um, yeah, it works as well. So you see just with the same code, we have basically the same kind of rendering. Um, but yeah, it's still displayed under the status bar, but I believe, yes, that safe area view is just for iOS and, and Android is a bit different. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the next part of this talk. So, um, so at Crossfield, we recently built um, the Red Bull Global Rallycross iOS and Android apps. So they had an existing uh, WordPress um, website, and this is, this is it. Uh, it's a pretty standard WordPress website, so you have different sections and, and, and news and a gallery and, and everything that you would expect for such a website and the results. That's probably the most interesting part of this uh, website. And so the mobile application which are on the App Store were built using React Native. So this is the, the iOS uh, version. So I'm just going to show you some quick screenshots. So here we have, for instance, the news and the, the, the results and the details and the, the, the driver profile pages. And on, on Android, it's, it looks basically the same. Um, but there are some platform specifics um, changes like uh, the, the transition are, are respecting Android in the transitions, and like the buttons are using the ripple effects, and, and yeah, so so you really have the feeling those two applications are really at home in in, the, in both of these platforms. So what we're trying to do, what we're going to do today, is uh, rebuild the, the news feed basically, and and and, and connect it to to the, the Red Bull Global Request uh, API and fetch basically the same, this, the same uh, data. Uh, let's do that. So let's go back to our editor, and we're going to start from scratch. So first of all, so we're going to need a bunch of different dependencies. So I'm gonna, uh, let's switch the profile implementation. I'm going to add them. Okay. So we're going to to add the dependency we need. So we need we'll need the Moment GS application um, library, React Navigation as well, and React Native Render HTML. And and you, you'll see when I, I'll use them. And we just add them to the product. So you see the Moment library is just the Moment library that you're probably used to, and that's what's good with React Native. You can just reuse like the existing uh, JavaScript library that you you've been using for a long time on the web, and just import them and to, to use them inside your, your React Native applications. That's, that's quite awesome, because it saves a lot of time being able to, to reuse all those, these libraries. All right, so here we have those. So we're going to use React Navigation, uh, which is a really great um, a navigation library. Um, open source, and what's good about this one is uh, it abstracts away the, the platform um, differences between iOS and Android, so on iOS it will use the iOS, the iOS transition, and on Android the, the Android uh, transitions, and also the, like the, the, the navigation bars, um, differences, and, and toolbars, and everything, so you don't have to, to worry too, too much about this, uh, and it's, it's really great, you, you should check it out. Okay, so let's remove all of this because we're not going to need it. So here I've, I'm going to use a snippet because yeah, it's, I don't want you to, to wait for me to, to type all these lines of code and it's a bit boring, but I'm going to explain what they do. So the Stack Navigator basically manages a, a stack of, 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 of views 
And here we, we declare uh, the different routes that it manages. So here it's the main route is going to be the news, the news screen, and the secondary one is going to be the news details. And here we have a bunch of different uh, styling options, so it, it looks nice. Uh, so let's, but here, if we save, it's gonna complain because here we have a screen which is defined, but we haven't, like the news uh, screen is not, uh, is not there yet. So let's just add, add them. So screen, new file, so news.js. Um, news details. Okay, so let's just news. Okay, let's add a background call. Flex one. Okay. News details. Let's go back, and now we need to import them. Import news from screen, news. Okay, same for details. Okay, and if we reload, hopefully, no, something's not correct. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, we are not um, exporting anything yet, but we need just to export the stack that we created, and this is our root component. Stack, 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 all right. Export default, yeah. And reload. There we go, so that's our first screen. And here we have the, the title of this screen, so we can change it easily as well. It reloads, it works. Okay, that's great. So let's go to our news screen. And here we're going to basically use a, we want to display the, the list of news, so we're going to use a flat list. Uh, the flat list uh, component is really good when you have a, um, a large number of items that you want to display in a list, because it's, not, it's just going to render the items that are on screen, and, and, and this is what you need to do on, on mobile, and I believe basically on, on the browser as well. Otherwise, it's going to have to create so many uh, different uh, and render different elements that it's going to be too slow and, and too memory intensive that it's going to crash uh, your application. So flat list is optimized for uh, this use case. Flat list, okay. And flat list takes as uh, input uh, a data, which is basically a list an array of, um, of items that you want to display, and the render item method, which uh, tells how each item is going to be rendered. All right, so, but we need some actual data. So for now, we're going to use some, uh, some fake data just, just so we don't have to wait for anything. All right, fake, so just, and let's define our render item method. Okay. So, yeah, just so you don't have to. Oh, I'm just, just duplicating some stuff. So, that's our render item method. So, it's basically using a, uh, you see, view text element and the touchable uh, highlight element. So we're going to need to import them, and just, I need to add the style as well. So a style sheet, so all right, let's just remove this one. Again, these are just the style that I'm using in this view, and um, let's import everything that is needed. So we have the image component, a touchable highlight component, and we've got an interesting error. So, return flat list, yeah, okay. Oh, we forgot about the moment library. Okay. 
Okay, text. Yeah. It's up. And there you go. I just need to adapt a few more things. So we have here our list of items. But for now, it's just uh, pulling some fake data from uh, that, that we have here. So the title, the date, and the image for each item. And, but the images are actually from the Red Bull Global Array Cross website. Here, we just have an issue with this. We, we have a, a warning which tells us that we are missing keys for each item. So um, we're just going to add a little, a little thing, a little uh, property, which is a key extractor. It basically um, tells uh, the flat list uh, component um, which um, key to use for each item, because that's what's, uh, what, what uh, um, Bobby was explaining when you're rendering dynamically a list of items, React, it expects a key for each item. So item, item dot ID. See, here we're just going to de use the ID as the key and no more warning. All right, so let's just adapt. Oh yeah, we forgot, the, I forgot this, the container. So it looks just a bit nicer. And here we go. So it looks basically like the, the, the real Red Bull Gobar Ecos application. And the next step is to actually fetch the data from, from the WordPress API. All right, so we're going to use the component did mount um, lifecycle method. And here you see I can just uh, use a wait because fetch is really returning a promise. So if you follow the, the talk from Kevin, so you, you, you should be familiar with this syntax now. And once we have the response, we just uh, get the JSON from it. And here I'm just uh, processing those items and just extract, extracting what I actually need. And then from there, I, I just uh, change the state and pass it, um, and update the state from the component. So here we're going to add those two state uh, properties. So it's loading true, and what else? Uh, post, which is, we can just tell and define at first. Uh, so post, okay, and here we're going to use those those properties from the state. Okay. And all right, that's let's let's save it and see what it does. Yay! There you go. It it fetched uh, the data from the API, and you see it's probably you see that the items are different because. These are the real items used on, on, on the website, on the WordPress website. Um, and now what we're going to do is basically uh, implement the second screen where you access the details for, uh, and you want to display the, the news details. And for that, we're going to, to implement the, the on-press uh, handler for the touchable highlight. So touchable highlight is basically um, a button, a wrapper for, for handling uh, touch, uh, touch events. And what it does is when you touch uh, the, the element, it, it highlights the background a little bit so you can see what, that something is being uh, done. And so I'm just going to, to add the function here. So it's being part the, the post item. Post. And so since we are using um, React Navigation, um, each screen managed by React Navigation is passed a navigation uh, a property, which allows to, to get access to the navigation API and push uh, different screens. And that's what we're going to use here. So props.navigation, navigate. That's how you use it, and you just pass the name of the route that you want to use. So, and here we also want to pass it the, the post item as a parameter. So let's have a look at this. So now 
for instance, if I click, so you see that when I click, it applies a small like overlay on top of it. I don't know if it's visible here. Yeah. yeah, okay. And if I let it through it, so yeah, here it purchased my screen, and you see it's, it, it, it's using the, the, yeah, the standard iOS uh, transition. And you can also swipe from, from the, the edge to, 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 to go back. So it's exactly what you're used to on iOS. So let's just have a look at what we have on Android. If we do it, do the same. Oh, I believe it needs to be refreshed first. Let's, let's put it here. Okay, it's fetching, and there you go. And when you touch this one, it, it, it uses a different transition. That's a transition you're used to on Android. And you see the title is uh, allied on the left, and it's yeah, but just respecting the, the, the platform um, uh, paradigm. So here we have basically the, the React Native application running on both uh, emulator, and, and yeah, with basically the same code, we, we, are, we are producing a really nice-looking application with a standard uh, platform Styles and I, I believe this is really powerful. I don't know what you think, but yeah, uh, to me, I think it's amazing compared to what I was used to when I was doing standard iOS and and and, and just replicating the same code on Android with Java. And that's so much easier to do that this way. All right, uh, let's go to the news detail screen. So here we're going to render um, basically the news uh, component. The news details, so we're going to use the React Native Render HTML component. Let's just call it HTML. It's simpler. Okay. Whoops. HTML. Um, I guess it's just. HTML, and we need to pass just the data. So the data, so since we're passing um, the post directly to, uh, to the screen, so we can access this parameter from the props navigation as well. Uh, it's state.params, so okay. So post. Body, I guess I believe that's what I called it. Yeah, body here. Okay. Um, guess. Let's reload. Wait for it to load. And there you go. We're displaying basically the, the content of the news item. Uh, what it does here, it, it basically it passes the, the HTML that is written as the, the body of the post from the WordPress API and it renders it using native elements. So this works reasonably well, but uh, it doesn't support like the, the full HTML and, and CSS syntax, but like for simple uh, news elements like this, it's, it's enough, and it's more performant and faster than using a web view to display this content. But yeah, if you had like more complicated stuff, you would most likely use a web view to, so you don't lose anything here. Okay, so we're going to also display uh, an image at the top, so it looks a bit nicer. So image and the source. Is the yeah. You're feeding it HTML, but it doesn't support CSS. It supports a subset of CSS. Just subset. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Simple formatting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this is, yeah, it's an open source component. There are more of them, and, and, and this one is the, the one that was working uh, uh, the best for this use case, so that's why I used it. But uh, actually, on the real Red Bull Global, Arc, Global Rail Ecross application, I used the web view because, yeah, I needed to, to support more uh, styles, and yeah, it was easier to do it this way. So here, for the image, we're just going to display. Uh, we need to pass the style, so image uh, styles. The image, let's add the style. So, uh, height. 
I'm just going to use a constant here because it will be useful later on when we add the animation. Image height. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's just reload. No. Okay. The image should appear unless, yeah, here it is. So, and let's have a look at another item. That's too small. But here you see we forgot to, to wrap everything inside a scroll view. And you cannot really see the, uh, the, the end of it, so let's just add, let's just use a scroll view instead. Scroll view. But we need to import it. Yeah, okay. Well, scroll view. There you go. Now it scrolls. It scrolls here as well. Uh, I'm just going to replace the HTML element here because I added a bunch of other properties to fix some of the rendering. Uh, news feed, news item, HTML. Okay. Ah, dimensions, I forgot. Dimensions, linking. So I, I did those um, line of codes because um, to render some of the content inside the, 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 the body of each uh, news item. Uh, yeah, so it, it, like images, for instance, uh, were not sized properly for, for a mobile application. So here there's this alter node method which allows to uh, to transform a little bit uh, the, the HTML elements before they are passed to, to the React Native um, uh, rendering function. And yeah, you can basically change it, anything that doesn't uh, display correctly using this library. So it's, it's quite powerful, but um, yeah, if eventually you would like to use uh, the web view if, if, it's, if it's going, uh, if you have too much trouble to, to, to display those elements. So here you see that the, the, the image inside the, the news is now displayed correctly and doesn't uh, grow past the, the, width, the width of this uh, emulator. And yeah, so just it, it, so that it looks nicer. Um, I think we're almost uh, done here, but what, we want, what we're going to do now is add a little animation. Uh, so yeah, so it's a little bit uh, nicer. And for this, we're going to use the animated uh, library. It's a really powerful uh, declarative animation library. It comes with a lot of um, uh, different um, possibilities. And what we're going to do here is just apply a little overscroll effect on the image. And let me show you how to do this. It might make not too much sense to you, but uh, once we are finished, and, and you can ask me more questions. So for this, we're going to change the scroll view to be an animated scroll view. This allows it to um, more efficiently um, link the scroll position to, um, to, to the, the, the transform and scale that we're going to apply to the image so it doesn't pass over the React Native bridge and, and everything will be handled natively on, on, the, on the native side and it will be like all performance. So, um, so, and we change this image to be an animated image. All right. And we need to introduce some state here. So let's call it scroll Y. And it's just basically an animated value that we're going to use. State scroll Y state using, okay. And now we're going to connect it. Oops. So where is it? On scroll. And that's how you connect. Basically, you link uh, the scroll, um, the scroll position to the the animated value. Um, yeah, the syntax might not make too much sense to you, but 
yeah, there are more information on the React Native website. And now that the, the scroll position is linked to, to the scroll y variable, we're going to use it to uh, change the, the scale of the image. So we need to, um, to change this. So transform, transform. So it hurts scale, image scale. We'll just save. And I'm going to use image scale. All right. So here, what we're going to do is basically tell uh, that when the scroll position is uh, negative, uh, it's going to grow up to twice the size uh, of the image. Um, so we're basically map mapping uh, what's happening to the scroll uh, position to what should happen to the, the scale of the image here with an input and output. And extrapolate right uh, set to clamp means we're not going to do anything on uh, when it's uh, not over scrolling. So let me show you. Let's go inside. Oops, image scale. Image scale, scale. Did I? Oh, I forgot to save. Okay. So, all right. So here now, when I go down, you see that the image is being scaled. But that's that's quite nice. But yeah, it doesn't look correct yet. So let me just switch to a live reload, basically uh, auto, auto reload, so we don't lose the state every time I save. All right. Let's go back. So now I, I don't need to go back to this screen every time I'm going to do a change to the news detail screen, so that's really handy. And we, when you have a big application, it saves so much time. That's, that's really great. So let's, we see that we also need to translate uh, the image as we scroll. Otherwise, it doesn't look too nice. So image translate. All right. So first, we image. Uh, translate. We're just going to translate along the y-axis. Image translate. We save. And now when I go down, you see it looks much better. It just translates at the same time and as it's being scaled. So it, it looks like more normal, like uh, what you would expect uh, from it. So yeah, I believe we, we reached this, the end of this application. Let's have a look at the at the Android version to see how it, how it works there. Here we go. So yeah, on Android, there's actually no uh, over-scroll effect because yeah, it's a different pattern. But uh, we could have applied, applied another, like, uh, another animation, like some parallax, basically. And, 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 um, yeah, so, but yeah, so here we have our application basically working on both platforms. And um, yeah, don't you think it's? It's amazing. <laughs> so what's cool as well is, so we're just going connected to the to a WordPress backend. So, but we can easily uh, change the backend. So let's let's change it. So let's uh, use the, the Crossfield website. We just change it here, and let's. Maybe let's go back to, let's just reload, basically. So now it's, it's fetching some data from our own website, which should work, I believe. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's coming. It's a bit slow. And where are the images? I guess it's just a network. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. We can have the other images. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really slow. But yeah, so let's have a look at this one. Um, yeah, so we just, yeah, you, you could, pl if you have your own um, uh, WordPress uh, website, which I believe all of you have, uh, you could just change this line of code and, and, and create a, a, a a native application for your website, and Whoa. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
And, and that's Ricky, our, our CEO. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Did I? Oh, yeah. So I have got, I've got something else to show you. Um, all the code that I've uh, prepared here is also, I've posted it to, to uh, this incredible tool, which is called uh, Expo Snack. So it's basically code sandbox for uh, React Native application. So it's really great when it works. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I could show you this. Because it's really, really great. Uh, all right, so yeah, I guess, yeah, we'll see that. Yeah, I, I'll put the link later on and you can have a look yourself. But oh, there you go. So yeah, it's, it's, it's there. Basically, all the code that I've, I've, I've shown you today is, is on this uh, link. And you don't even have to install anything. It's just you go to this website, and you've got all the code that I've, I've done. And on the right, you've got an, an emulator that you can use. And so here, yeah, here it says device preview is at capacity because yeah, it's a free service. So uh, there's some kind of line and, and to use the emulator. But if you scan the, the QR code that you see here, you can run it directly on, on, your, own, um, on your own device, iOS and Android. You just have to install the, the Expo application. And yeah, you can directly play with it. And, and uh, let me show you if on my device. Uh, I'm going to scan. Can I scan? No, let's do it here. So I'm scanning it. And it's going, it says device connected. And yeah, there you go. You have just the React Native application. But now it's much better because it's on, on your own device. And, and yeah, you can do that on your own as well. And I encourage you to, to play with this tool because here you can change the code and have it live reload and, and change everything. And, and you can play, play with it. And yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's it. Go play with this one. Uh, all right. So here's the link with the, the QR code, but you already got it. And that's it. Thank you, everyone, for watching this. Okay. Questions? Yeah, if you, you if you have some questions, uh, I can start to answer now. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. I think it's possible, but I've never used it. So yeah. But that's something I've had never the. Um, the need to, to do because like using the style sheet that is provided directly with React Native is is quite quite um, quite good and it's also like uh, isolated for each component and that's what you want for this kind of uh, application. Yeah, yeah, it's that's uh, the better uh, um, way to do it in React Native. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, can you repeat, sorry? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically when, when you have, um, for instance, on the buttons, you're going to, you, to use a condition, uh, uh, like to use like the, the ripple button on Android and, and, and the, the standard like opacity-based button on iOS, and that's like the, the, the difference, all the little difference that you have between iOS and Android. So buttons, uh, transitions, what else? Uh, uh, some platform-specific APIs, like, um, uh, like the share sheet as well is, is different between those platforms. And that's where you introduce some if into your code. And yeah, that's the difference. Yeah. Can you go back to the Sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah? 
Yeah, you, you basically reuse the, the native push notification system on both platforms. So what you have to do is import a native component to do it, and, but with a React Native uh, JavaScript intra interface. But for this, you, cannot, you have to eject from Create React Native App because um, Create Re React Native App cannot um, use like na new uh, additional native components that are not provided directly. So you just like you, you just install uh, the, the the dependency using npm. So for instance, you, oh, you didn't talk. Okay, okay. Um, when you eject, basically what it does, it it produces an Xcode and Android uh, project, and from there you can import whatever native uh, component that you need to use. For instance, for push notification, you can. Uh, use um, like one signal, I don't know if you know this one, but yeah, this one is pretty good, but, uh, and you would use a one signal uh, library for, uh, and integrate it on both iOS and Android, but control it from uh, React Native. Yeah. yeah? So as your company for mobile app development switch over to React Native, or do you find yourself in some cases having to use iOS or Java? Um, Sometimes we drop down to iOS and Java code just for really specific stuff. Um, but most of the time, what, what I've observed is uh, when I need like a, a platform-specific native API, it's already like pre-packaged by someone else, a third-party uh, component, and I just import it and, and add it to my project, and I can use it directly. Yeah. An ORM. Um, I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, augmented reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can. You can definitely. That's what we we did recently. I played with that. Um, so what I did for this is basically drop down to native code. But there's um, there's a company out there which does like a React Native abstraction on top of ARKit and and uh, what is it called? An Android. Uh, AR, AR core, I think. Core. Yeah, and 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 it's it looks really promising because you can use all these um, augmented reality components and, and use it from React Native and and um, yeah, I, I can post the link if if you're interested. All right, all good. No, I never. Know. Yeah. Uh, for chats, um, so either you they would provide an API and we, you would recreate uh, like the correct uh, chat like um, views to, to 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 display those elements, or also if, because it's quite a lot of work already, so you can you can also like reuse there like if you have a. a, a a chat uh, library that you like to use on iOS or Android, you could import it in, inside React Native, and, and that would save you some time. But you would lose some um, ability to customize some of those elements because uh, you cannot really touch uh, the styles of what you're importing. It's, it's basically uh, isolated and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yes, yes, you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, it's just like uh, the standard way of uh, importing native components inside React Native, and, and you can import fragments as well and, and whatever you, you like. So what's interesting is all the, the, the building blocks that we're using inside React Native, like view, text, and, and, and all the others are really um, uh, imported the same way that you would import your own components. It's like the the same uh, the same interface and you you're not um, they don't have their own like private way of importing native components just yeah every every component that you want to import natively is is treated the same way okay all right thank you thank you <laughs>